Sounds good. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks again, Robin, for doing this with me. <laughs> Hi, uh, uh, nice to be here. So would you like to tell me a little bit about your background and how Nango started? Sure. Um, I'm originally a software engineer by training. Um, I started a B2B SaaS a few years ago. We have built that to about 55 people. We had a lot of integrations with other like software systems. Um, and there we sort of like, you know, discovered the pain um, of running those. So we had like 15% of our engineers actually just working on integrations and maintaining them and you know, adding a few more. Um, and so that's how we sort of discovered that. And then, you know, went deeper and realized that like there's a lot of teams out there basically building integrations one by one from scratch. And so, yeah, that's something that we wanted to improve upon. And that's how like sort of Nangle started. I love it. These are the best problems to work on, the ones that come from personal experience. Yeah, the ones that you know yourself, definitely. <laughs> I love it. And so how did you come to the decision to open source Nango? What went through your mind? Yeah, so I think it was sort of like two things that drove us to this like decision. Um, one was that it was a natural fit for a product. So with Nango, we built basically like, you know, building blocks and, and, and the infrastructure that makes it easier for engineers to build integrations. So we're pre-building things like OAuth and like syncing data from third-party APIs to your database. Um, and with those, you know, sort of components, you use them in your own application, right, to like build the actual integration. So you'd like use Nango for the OAuth part or just sync certain data from the external API to your DB. And then you will query that data from the DBU and, and, you know, sort of do additional processing. When we started to look into that, we realized that sort of like the, the direction the product was going into. We realized that that would be much better as an open source. So, you know, you can like um, look at the code, you can extend it sort of if needed. Um, and it's much easier also to sell codes for people if like sort of, you know, that need arises. And the second aspect sort of was the community piece that we said like, you know, if we're helping people like make those integrations better, it'd be awesome sort of like if people could actually help themselves and, and help each other as well. Um, and so we had this like community component from day one and, and like sort of both things together just made a lot of sense for the open source then. No, that, that makes total sense. And so do you think it's an edge when it comes to product development to actually be open source and you can move faster like that? Um, I think for us, it's definitely been a great fit. Um, I'm not sure like every, you know, product would benefit as much from it. I think like it's sort of, you know, if you're building for engineers and you're building a very like infrastructure or, or dev centric product, I think you know, there's a lot of advantages. I think it's actually one of the really interesting sort of movements that's happening is that I think a lot more companies are going open source first um, this way. Um, so like, you know, like we started with like cal.com and, and, and GitLab certainly was one of the very first guys. Um, and now, you know, you have companies like Posthog, um, Airbyte, right? Like sort of doing a lot of, of, of things there. Databases have been open source for a very long time. It's been a very successful model for them. Um, so I think there's like a, a big, you know, sort of culture around that, um, especially for dev centric products. I'm not sure it'd be great sort of like for everybody. Um, I think it always, you know, depends what you're building basically. And do you think all these companies represent a new type of, you know, company? Like if you could point your finger at it, would you say something specific has changed over the past years and what that might be? Yeah, I think it's a, it's part of a bigger trend of, I think, you know, sort of software is becoming more pervasive, right? Like it's, it's definitely like every part of the business these days. Um, I think more and more people are sort of looking to build on top of existing solutions and not to sort of be locked into them. Um, and so I think that's sort of, you know, part of, of the drive, at least, um, I'm not sure that that's like, you know, something fundamentally has changed, but I think also that like sort of the pre-existing ones, they have actually like proved that the model can work. So like, you know, with GitLab around with, you know, things like Elasticsearch around with like, you know, the, the database, like MongoDB, right? Like for a huge, like sort of success story, uh, completely open source sort of. Um, yeah, I think like there's been a lot of like proof points basically that like open source is not a hindrance. It can actually be um, a totally commercially successful product still. Um, and I think that made it just a much nat more natural choice for, for a lot of companies these days to, to explore that path. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and so how did you navigate, in, you know, choosing a license and then, you know, monetizing the project as you move forward? Yeah, so I think it was important for us, you know, from the start that we said, okay, well, for this to really be successful and to be usable in like commercial products, like we want to, you know, also be a commercial company ourselves and, and like actually be able to devote, you know, a lot of like um, manpower full time to this. Um, and so we needed something that like was on one hand permissive for the community. We really wanted them to just be able to take it, self-host it, uh, you know, build on top of it and, and make it part of their products if they wanted to. Um, but we also at the same time sort of wanted something where like if there's a managed offering basically or really, you know, strong like sort of enterprise features, um, that, you know, we are building out and we want to be able to monetize that. And, and that's how we basically landed on the Elastic license. 
that you know allows everybody to freely use the thing themselves. They can self-host it in their own um, you know products. You can use it for your SaaS, for instance, self-host it and like offer it to your customers, and that's totally fine. The only thing that we're sort of retaining for ourselves is like if you manage this as a managed offering for other developers, then like you know that's sort of what, what we're uh, what we're doing. And is this something that you're discussing with you know current the potential customers at the moment? How you could go about pricing it, or did you leave it for later? Um, no, I think the conversation you know comes up. Like we get asked quite a lot about like cloud offering. Um, I think there's a trend really that like. You know, it's great that the source code is available. People love that they can run it locally, that they can quickly experiment and try it. Um, I think there's some people also who are very happy to self-host it, but there's you know, another group of people who are more used to like sort of, you know, managed offers in the cloud and, and who would rather not like spend the amount of time, you know, running their own infrastructure. And so with those guys were definitely like, you know, sort of in active discussions about like what could pricing look like and, and how could it work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And is there yet any clarity when it comes to whether it's going to be usage based or on a subscription basis, the number of people using it? Something you're yeah, it's for sure. So, there may be some sort of like usage based part in it, right? Like, we only want to monetize. And we actually have like more stuff about this in our docs. Um, if, if people want to go deeper, like we sort of, you know, open source our like monetization and pricing philosophy. Um, but like the, the short end of it is basically like it's going to be some usage based things so you're paying with what you're actually using. Great, great. And, uh, so far from the conversations, you know, you might be speaking with a small team, just the founders or like a handful of people and then a really big organization. So what are the differences already you have seen when it comes to what people ask you and kind of like front running development? Mm -hmm. Right, I guess it's an interesting one. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the conversations are always obviously a little bit different, right? I think smaller teams are more looking to get started with integrations. They're building out their first ones. So, you know, topics like OAuth and, and quickly getting up to speed, fast building integrations, you know, are really important to them. Um, and it's in a way, I think, like similar things that keep people up in large organizations. It's just more that at scale. So how do we stay fast at scale? How do we make sure that like, you know, the things actually run fair amongst our thousands of customers? Like we don't want one big guy to sort of like block out a lot of other small things, right? Like how can we make sure there's some like fairness in, in incorporated into that? Um, those sorts of questions come up, right? And so it's, you know, nuances, but still I think the objective is the same thing. It's like people are asking, how can I build integrations fast without being constrained by what the external system can do. Like how can I make use of the full third party API um, without sort of like repeating myself and, and building the same infrastructure over and over again. Absolutely, absolutely. And so if, if you could uh, just name sort of like a, a customer profile that you guys are you know, focusing on at the moment in terms of team size or uh, some other attribute. I think it's um, you know mostly about the integrations that people are looking to build. So I think Nango works best for teams who are looking to make use of the full third-party API. So if you're looking to build a deep integration with an accounting system, a deep integration with a CRM, and or with a productivity software, if you're looking to like integrate with Slack or Sendesk, um, you know those are we're seeing a lot, and we're seeing a lot, like I said, like on the CRM and on the accounting side. That's where people tend to build really deep and, and sort of native integrations that want to have a good look and feel. Um, with the product and really makes make use of all of the product's features, right? Then I think like that's where we're definitely strongest. Um, but also I think for teams that, you know, mostly are, are just looking to get started and want to like quickly set up an OAuth, sync some data from the external system and work with that internally, we're probably the fastest time to market there um, currently. And it's self-service for everyone that you get started in a few minutes, so... You know exactly like you, know, you can just yeah. check out the github repo and i think it takes like you know two three minutes to set up a first sync and, and from there on out it should hopefully be quite smooth exactly so now it is the first year of nango how did you approach finding your first contributors where did they come from and uh, what have you learned maybe from it yeah that was a really interesting one you know like we were not really like looking for contributors per se um, I think we were definitely like, you know, looking for users and people to try it and give us feedback. And, and that sort of naturally morphed into people contributing. Um, I think one of the things I was very positively surprised about with like you know, the whole open source community coming sort of from more a traditional, you could say sort of like cloud B2B SaaS background. So people don't just raise problems, but they like actively contribute solutions. So as quickly as we had a few people like, you know, find problems or, or small, you know, bugs, they would typically like say, look, here's the issue and here's the PR that fixes it. Um, and that was, you know, really, really cool, obviously, and it continues to be really cool. So we weren't really looking for like sort of, you know, contributors to contribute to the project. We were looking for people to like give us feedback, try it um, and tell us, you know, what's missing. Um, and that naturally led to them actually like building what's missing and uh, yeah, joining the discussions and so on. 
It's completely organic. I really like this. And and it's curious how it's going to evolve uh, from, from the customers themselves trying to pull you in a certain direction and how the contributors can cover all of these things. Um, I'm curious to, to ask you, so, you know, it sounds like a smooth ride, but what are the challenges that you've experienced so far? As a maintainer, yeah. I mean, the challenges are always in, in the details, right? Like, I think, you know, every startup journey from far, uh, from like some distance, like it looks like a smooth ride, sort of, and, and a smooth trajectory. But when you're inside in it, right, like it's always like the ups and downs and, and the bumps. Like, you see the spikes of, you know, traffic on one day when you have like published something that really gets a lot of traction. And then, like, three days later, it's like, you know, crickets because all the traffic died down and, and people have, you know, got sort of like what they wanted or, or, or moved on to the project or some other priorities at the time. Um, yeah, I think those are, you know, always, um, like sort of challenges to navigate and, and next is obviously sort of like prioritization, right? Like you got to stay focused and make sure that, you know, with the purely, with the limited resources that we have, we're basically building the things that help people the most. And I think that's where, you know, again, the open source and, and the contributions really can help. Um, like we have all our issues sort of open, um, on GitHub, people can like read through those comment, you know, upvote. Um, and I think that really helps us get a feel of the pulse and understand sort of what's missing and what we need to build next. And, and that has worked really well for us so far. That's great. And at the moment, it's just the founders uh, working on this full time, or are you also looking to expand your team, maybe involve some contributors more? Are you no, working? currently it's just the, the two founders who are working on this. And then, you know, we do have a few contributors who are contributing quite actively. Um, and then, you know, we're definitely looking to expand the team also next year. Um, so one tool will make a, uh, start making a first few hires, um, also full-time internally um, for us. And for that, you know, also having experience from a previous startup in terms of hiring, like how do you think things might be different now being open source and how could you actually use that to your advantage? Uh, and I have an example to give you what I've heard from other founders. I'm curious yeah. to your thoughts first, yeah. Um, cool. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so I... I honestly, I'm, I'm open. I you know we're, this is the first time we're doing this as open source, right? So I think like there's a lot of a big chunk for us is like you know knowing what we don't know, and, and I think that's definitely one of the things where we just have not done it before. Um, I you know would expect that with um, the thing being open source, maybe you know we have like an easier way sort of for candidates to take a look at the product. Maybe we have even you know tried it or like you know got to experience it. Um, it's also like a good tell you about sort of like hiring engineers. Um, it's product for engineers, right? Sort of from engineers. So it's sort of like you get a build for, you know, your own uh, peers and, and for your community sort of. Um, but yeah, I'd be curious actually about your insights um, that yeah. you got from other founders in the space. Yeah, I mean, so Ivy, for example, uh, that, that went from zero to 600 contributors in like mm. the first year. Uh, they opened full-time positions, right? And so what they did was they asked every applicant to actually contribute. To go solve an issue mm -hmm. and they paid them like 25 dollars like just for giving it a try and uh and you said three ha half of them 300 of the 600 new contributors came from that uh which, is, yeah. which i mean it's phenomenal for the project and it makes sense because the best way to mm -hmm. judge an engineer is to actually you know work together and see them in action uh so that worked really well for them and another nugget i kept uh was from daniel was that uh he actually actively reached out to a lot of university professors to ask their students if it would be interested to contribute or to apply. Mm -hmm. And so another big chunk came actually from academia, Kieran students. And uh, and something we've tried ourselves too and other startups, I, I, I definitely am a fan of doing this. So, so yeah, effectively, um, you know, in practice, and, and we actually have a feature on Algora to do this, you know, when you share your job, you just attach to it some open issues and make it part of the application process. Kind of like the interview right so right. the superpower you will experience and it should lead also to big contributor growth um mm. I, I heard it from the founder of uh, lean and dot dev as well he, he he called it like contract to hire he said when we're hiring mm -hmm. uh, for a few months we worked with these people they solved our issues we paid them something and that's how they onboarded them uh it's mm -hmm. not an industry sort of like standard doing this but it feels like more more people are trying it so so cool. yes, you know, when time comes, I would, I would, I would take that uh, approach. And and you think, you know, into the first quarter, you might be doing this, the looking to expand the team, uh, or are you are you not setting a timeline instead? Just when there's much much more pull from the market, then it's gonna organically come. How are you thinking about it? No, I think it like it will make sense probably for us to start with this fairly soon. Um, in terms of like hiring and growing the team, right? Like we're starting to see. 
you know, good growth. Basically, um, we went from you know zero to two hundred stars in, in less than two months, and, and like hundred people in the community. So like, we're starting to see good traction. I think it makes sense to double down on the team as well, um, in order to be able to to like you know continue the trajectory that we're on, basically, and, and make sure everybody has a great experience from day one. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and 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 I've heard that it can get hard once you know you're growing really fast and you have a lot of people coming in to sort of like as a maintainer just you know, stay, stay ahead of everything and support everyone. Daniel from Ivy told me that everyone on the team does code review. Everyone on the team helps out and answers questions and whatnot. That's the only way to support it. Um, you know, for, for people, for a lot of people, it's a challenge, but definitely documentation is, uh, is one of the key pieces here. And, and you guys from day one focused on, on building this out, right? So, so you should probably, you should probably not have, not have issues there. Um, and so you told me right now you're in Switzerland, you're going to travel to Greece, then San Francisco with the next new year. Um, what have been, ha have there been any surprises so far uh, building in open source um, outside of, you know, the things you told me so far? Um, I think, as I mentioned, you know, I think a, a very good positive surprise is just like how solution oriented and, and focused people are. Um, you know, it's been very nice working with the community um, on actually like sort of, you know, surfacing the, the parts that need to be improved. Um, refining that and then you know making sure it, we actually like improve them. Um, we've seen like great contributions on the discussion side for like sort of the thornier bigger um, issues and, and a lot of the small things you know sort of like people come with a solution prepared right and like you know here's my PR basically that fixes the bug that I found yesterday that you know I messaged you on Slack about and it's like this is amazing like I you know as a as I said sort of like as a cloud you know B2B SaaS um, you know, founder before I, I'm more used to like customers, you know, raising issues because they naturally can't fix them, right? Like they don't have insight into how it works. Mm. Um, so this is super nice for a change. So it sounds like both building product and talking to users is a little more fun and pleasurable when doing open source. Could could you say that? Or I think it's more direct for us mm -hmm. um, because of the direct, you know, sort of communication we have with people, you know, the Slack community. Um, you know, like typically people join that when they start using it, and, and you know, sort of maybe ask a question or not, right? Um, but like, it's very easy for both sides. I think they're just reach out and like, you know, sort of quickly drop notes and, and like ask questions. Um, and so that has been, you know, super cool. And then, you know, like me and my co-founder, we're both engineers, uh, sort of, you know, originally by training. Um, we both, you know, worked in, in, in like engineering teams and product teams for years. Um, and so I think it's just super, you know, fun for us to actually be working with sort of our peers and be building for our peers because we know exactly we have a good idea what it feels like to be on the other side of the conversation. Um, and it's super cool when you can help people like, you know, build tools basically that allow them to build better products. Exactly. Exactly. Oh man. So um, would you, who, who have you been following? Like before you started as an open source founder, who did you look uh, to for advice for, for lessons? Is there someone that, you know, you actively follow, you might like to recommend to other people? Yeah, so like I think we talked to a few, you know, other founders from from open source companies, um, and there's not I think like a sort of a single one that I would say like you know was has been the silver bullet for us, but it's been like the, the community is super friendly in our experience, and people have been super nice. So, um, you know, we talked to James um, from uh, from Post Hoc. Um, we talked to the Novo founders, um, which were super helpful and were great to talk to. Um, we talked to Anto from, from Lago, which has been super helpful. Um, you know, we've definitely been following Airbyte, who built quite a lot of their stuff in the open, and I think that's super cool too. Um, so I think there's a lot of like, you know, great blueprints and, and, and like sort of resources out there. Um, and I think anybody who's interested in building an open source should just reach out um, to those people or <laughs> to other founders, and, and I'm sure, you know, they'll be happy to, to have a follow as well if needed. That's great. That's great. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, per personally, I can say that I, I mean, I love Postlog's blog and, and you know, James' uh, content as the CEO. And I also remember uh, the Superbase uh, CTO, he, he had a blog post about making the decision to go open source and he, he made it look like a no-brainer and mm -hmm. that had an impact uh, on me when reading it. So that's something that stuck with me. Um, that is, uh, so is there is there any... You mentioned already these projects. Is there another project that you are yourself using or like you know, following that excites you outside of Nango, of course. I think one that we're really, you know, we're using actually a lot and, and, and I think that is really amazing. <laughs> but I think a lot of people think that's really amazing. So I don't think it's like the most interesting answer in the world probably is like Postgres. Um, you know, all of basically super basic is built on Postgres, right? Like 
Um, Postgres is currently the main destination that we support. And, and there's a lot of really cool features out there that make some of the things a lot easier that we're doing. I think it's just a really amazing project for what open source can be. And it's really cool to see like sort of Postgres going from just, just sort of a database to really a platform that like, you know, several dozen like solid businesses are being built on top of um, and have been actually like, they have been like a bunch of really cool like sort of Postgres for niches, customized solutions. Um, yeah, I think that's an amazing sort of open source project. And I think it shows really the open source community at its best. Totally, totally. Personally, I like post hoc, like especially the, the recordings, the sessions that you can play back. I feel like, mm -hmm. you know, we were flying in the dark before that. And once we started using it, um, it, it made a difference uh, from our perspective. And in terms of uh, yourselves, uh, in terms of telemetry and sort of like having more granular insights into how people use it and whatnot, how do you presently manage that? Um, yeah. Yeah, we recently added some very basic super anonymous telemetry that you can turn off um, if you don't want to. Um, and so this like, you know, basically just tells us more or less when somebody starts Nango um, with like an anonymous push start, you know, sort of generated ID. Um, I've actually have details about that also on the docs. Um, but it's just more or less there for, for us to understand sort of like over time, you know, our numbers moving up or numbers moving down. Um, and, and what are people sort of, you know, querying. Um, and, and that's about it. Like we're not, don't really have any deep insights, honestly, from this on like what people do. And we definitely don't record any sort of like, you know, um, personally identifiable data. Um, yeah, but I don't think it's like, you know, through the open source and, 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 and the community, I think we have, you know, fairly good insights on, on like a different level that I don't think like we need to, um, you know, be super invasive on, on that side, basically. All right. And, uh, you know, sort of like as a, as a, as a closing remark, if you would like to maybe just, uh, you know, urge people to, to come, uh, you know, contribute to Nango and where they should go. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I mean, if you're interested to learn more about Nango, you should definitely check out our GitHub repo. Um, the name is spelled like Mango, but with an N. Um, and so it's Nango.dev um, or just check out the Nango repo on GitHub and you find everything there in the readme to get started. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks so much. Uh, I will uh, pause the recording right now or stop it. And uh, I think we already have like a lot of great uh, material cool. here. Uh, That's good.